What's, What's up, up everybody? everybody? What's up everybody? Al Al Alex here. Welcome to another uh, video. Let's talk vinyl record show uh, halls. First and foremost, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Wait, do you know this guy? Sam St. John is here. Say hi, hi Sam. Hi, Sam. I'm here. I was in my apartment. So Alex is actually here. Really, I'm here. But most importantly, Sam and I went to a Virginia Music Collectibles record show, essentially here in Salem, um, Virginia, the Southwest Virginia area, put on by, what's his name? Greg? Greg Neal. Greg Neal. Cool show. I was actually here last fall, went to the same show, saw a lot of the same dealers, and uh, yeah, definitely a good time, and uh, we got some pickups. We got a little mm -hmm. bit of a haul, and we're going to show you those right now. So... Um, you want to go first? You want to alternate? How do you want to do it? You have a few more. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, I can... Maybe I'll do two two to one or something like that. Sure. It don't matter. Yeah, okay. So, you start it. so yeah, not, not too much here. Now, <clears throat> I didn't get any, uh, maybe the same for you, like, no bangers, mm -hmm. right? No, like, grail pieces. You know, a lot of these were just like, oh, cool, that's a good price, or I need that for my collection or whatever, so... It was also a cash-only show, and only one of us had cash. Right. So, <clears throat> <laughs> so guess who didn't spend any money this weekend? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, so I found myself getting a lot of what I would prefer, like cheap heat, cheap heat, some jazz heat, um, some ladder career stuff, and then some other random stuff. So the first thing I will start with is a record from Herbie Hancock. This is Secrets. This came out in uh, 1976. So still kind of on the tail end of that mid 70s funk, uh, funk jazzy stuff that Herbie's great at. So this is in the shrink, but really it's just kind of trashy yeah. uh it's like <laughs> flopping all over this place like a bad noodle and so um you know but it was it was cheap it was inexpensive and uh man i mean 70s herbie you just can't go wrong with it it's just so funky and so great so into it same thing another pianist jazz pianist uh from the 70s this is focal point from uh mccoy tyner um of course great uh piano player that was really known for being in uh, john coltrane's uh band uh quartet so Koi Tiner, great, awesome, but, uh, you know, obviously once you get into the 70s, the stuff gets a lot cheaper. This was on the Milestones label, so, yeah, some cheap stuff here, but cool lineup, all good stuff, and so I was happy to have this. What about you, Sam? What do you got? I'll show my one. Um, I kind of had a similar theme. Like, I mean, there was a theme for two artists where I picked up two records each, and then I had one, probably like the coolest find of the night. Uh, it wasn't exactly anything that I was looking for, but that's the great part of record shows you go through you're flipping through all the the bins mm. um and when we, we talked so like like to get i guess some background like we went to the record show probably about an hour almost after it started shoulder to shoulder um crowd in there mm -hmm. um which again when alex was here back in november we were there kind of mid-afternoon it was it was kind of late so alex and i went we looked around i bought i bought the thing that i'm going to show last um in that little span um, and then we went for lunch, came back about an hour and a half later or so. And then it was just a world of difference. That's where we found everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. This was a, uh, a $5, very nice edition of, uh, Graceland by Paul Simon. This is my favorite Paul Simon record. It's in my top 10 favorite. Um, obviously this is based around you know, a lot of South African rhythms. He uses a lot of South African musicians like, uh, Maria McCaba, Lady Smith, Black Mabazo. Um, actually, and Linda Ronstadt's on here as well. Um, she's South African. <clears throat> anyway, there's um, some good stuff on here. Los Lobos is on here on the on the last track, mm -hmm. but um, had the big hits. You know, um, Diamonds in the Soles of Her Shoes and You Can Call Me Out. Graceland was also a minor hit. The title track, um, Boy in the Bubble, was huge. Um, so really good. The only the, there was like just a little bit. There was like one little ink spot of like a pen that somebody had on there. But I mean, it was yeah, but that's clean. Man. It, it's clean for five bucks. Inner um, too. Yeah, the original inner with the lyrics. Um, the record is. Again, like Alex will say, because it's the vinyl community, we have to show that WB Warner Brothers label there. But I mean, it's it's clean as a whistle, and it was five bucks. So, Great deal. Um, one of two Paul Simon albums. I'll show the second one here in a second. Yeah, and I love that too because like that cover because of its color, like it's white like that. Yeah. I feel like I always see it really dirty. It's usually a ring. ring yeah, ring, just a barely any. Yeah, but so that's... I don't know why he was selling it for five. Maybe I'll hear it and it sounds terrible. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. But anyway. Well, here's a, a, a Sam recommendation. This was not a jazz pickup. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm a power pop guy, but I think was always a little bit ignorant to this artist. Maybe because of timing, we're talking early 80s, which is an interesting time, I think, for power pop in general. Because I think it, I don't know that it was like a strict 
uh, genre during that time, or if that the 80s were more, great idea for a video, the 80s were more a time that power pop was just inserting itself into every other type of genre, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it was new wave or, yeah. you know, even like, like post-punk, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyways, this is uh, Marshall Crenshaw, just Marshall Crenshaw, yeah? Yeah, debut. Yep, debut, self-titled. Self uh, I, you know, it's like, again, this is cheap, I think make four bucks maybe. Four. Um, and we listened to it just a little bit ago. Love it. It's great. I, you know, I think I probably just saw the uh, cover for so long and, and was just turned off by it. And <laughs> yeah. I was just like, what in the Devo, <laughs> what in the latter era Devo, you know, <laughs> sort of thing is this? But uh, no, this is awesome. This is good stuff. And, uh, you know, I've heard people talk about Marshall Crenshaw all the time. You probably, among yeah. others. And um, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's so schmaltzy and mm -hmm. like cheesy, but in the best way. We love that type of stuff. So yeah, um, yeah this was a good uh, quick hit. And uh, yeah, back to you. Well, I'm going to go with Paul Simon 2. Um, actually, I had three. I had, a, I had a third Paul Simon in my hand at one point, but um, it was the cover was not exactly what I wanted. But this was really cool. Um, the, the, the price tag says 15 I think um, I ended up paying 10 for it. Or I paid, I paid 12 for it um, by the guy who kind of talked. I was able to talk down just a little bit. This is still crazy after all these years. Um, a huge album for him from 75, so we're almost in the, at the 50th. Again, original inner. Quite Again, cute. the same same kind of color as um, Graceland, kind of like that yellow, beige kind of um, cream color. But, um, I mean, huge hits on here. Still crazy after all these years. My Little Town, which was kind of a, a reunion with Art Garfunkel. Um, uh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover is on here. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, Gone at Last was kind of a minor hit. Really, really good stuff. Again, super happy to have that. And look at that height. You know, if, oh, uh, if JC at the flip side, if you end up watching this, that the original height is on there. Again, fantastic. There was no really any kind of like damage on the record itself. I haven't spun it yet, but mm -hmm. um, it'll, it's almost one of those like you'll listen to it almost without cleaning it because it's just, it looks so clean. But um, yeah, still crazy after all these years with that um, hype sticker on it. So happy to have that as well. Thing of beauty. Um, I'll do a couple quickies here. Googity. Um, this was an interesting one. Again, this was five bucks. <laughs> And, and, and truthfully, I wasn't as uh, familiar with the record itself and thought it was kind of weird because, you know, it's for those who have done the record show thing, you don't really have time to, like, do the research, right? Like, you yeah. do and you don't, depending on who you are. But it's one of those things of, like, if you're interested and it's cheap, just grab it and figure it out later, right? Because you, you feel like people are watching you. Oh, for sure the, they The are. record guys are just sitting there like, what do you want, boy? Yeah. <laughs> so I saw this. It was five bucks. And uh, it was <laughs> Stanley Turrentine called uh, The Look of Love. And... You know, Stanley Turrentine was one of these artists that, you know, classic blue note, <clears throat> mostly uh, jazz saxophonist that was doing a lot of like funky, weird things in the 80s. And when I saw this, I just assumed it was the same type of thing. I was like, oh, this is probably one of those 80s records that just gets really funky and they're okay, but they're just, you know, they're not obviously the classic stuff. But it was like flipping it over and looking at it and I was like, wait, 1968? And I was like, well, in 68, he was still on Blue Note, but this is on Applause. What is this? This is weird. And that's when I started thinking. I was like, wait a minute, but I'm looking at the lineup here. And I'm like, dang, like, Kenny Burrell is on here. You know, you got, this is all these things. Duke Pierce is on here. He, like, orchestrated all this type of stuff or arranged it. So what is going on? Anyways, I just grabbed it. But turns out this is, was released in 1968 on Blue Note. This is a 1981 reissue of the same record slightly different cover different color um but again cool for five bucks i'll take i mean it's got a beatles cover to me oh, it is a on uh, the back does it oh you're, yeah you're there and everywhere oh yeah for sure they, and they always do that type of stuff all the time mm -hmm. grant green kenny Pro would do that type of stuff all the time with these beatles covers um especially in the mid to late 60s yeah um which is awesome so um yeah so grab this so this is cool because it's a blue note title just reissued on a different label uh later on um and sort of uh, along the same jazz lines, really. Um, this has become one of my favorite uh, jazz piano players, definitely known as a virtuoso and one of the most well-respected um, players ever. He, I think he's still with us, but I know he's had like a number of strokes and has kind of lost the ability to play on like the left side of his body or something. Um, but that's Keith Jarrett. If I see anything Keith Jarrett, usually um, I try to pick it up. But this was... Arbor Zena from 1976. Um, so this is uh, his trio, but with an orchestra. So, I mean, he did anything from solo piano stuff to orchestrated stuff to fusion funky stuff. Um, so this is obviously more in the orchestra vein, um, which is cool. But what I always love, it's on ECM. Talked about ECM before. 
Pat Metheny's label. So many different artists were on that label. But I think they might have been the first. We're talking the mid-70s that were doing polyline sleeves Looking way up. back in the day. And even as they got into the 80s, they were doing rice paper sleeves. Yeah. So they were like the original, like that's an original inner in the polyline. And then they were doing the rice papers later on. So um, excited for this. We'll spend this tomorrow morning, maybe. Okay. You might like this. Um, so it's Sunday not, morning breakfast. It's not going to turn you off. Let's put it okay. that way. All right. Not like, it. not like me. Mm, well, mm. have another drink. Uh, so this is the second round of my uh, my theme. So you know, people that know my channel know I'm a I'm a big monkeys guy, and these um this is so this is I'll just show it. This is Missing Links Volume One by the Monkeys. And first of all, look at that spicy looking hype sticker right there. I know Alex saw it and almost fainted. Um, but it's it's fantastic. So it's a it's a lot of like alternate cuts. It's some it's like when Michael Nesmith again because we're on my, on my Alex's channel. So Michael Nesmith um, had the more country tinge to the monkeys. He had his own country rock records, and he was trying a lot of this stuff out with the monkeys before he quit the monkeys. So like Nine Times Blue is on here. Um, Carlisle Wheeling is on here. So there's some really good Nesmith stuff. I'm a huge Nesmith guy. This was um, released on Rhino in the 80, 87. Um, and again, it's also got that really fun, um, that rhino inner sleeve. Look at that. That's fun. With That's all the, cool. All the um, reissues on here, monkey stuff, novelty records, things like that. Elvis, Everly Brothers. But um, I mean, you also have stuff on here. Again, Carlisle Wheeling, um, all of your toys, um, uh, apples, peaches, bananas, and pears. Just goofy stuff that didn't make the records. But um, really, really cool. They've been, again, they've been reissued on a label that I'm not a big fan of. Um, but these rhinos are always known to be, you know, they sound really good. I have a few of like the original Monkeys albums that were reissued on Rhino that sound fantastic. So um, Missing Links Volume 1, really, really happy to have that. And it was also, it was 12, I think. I was able to get it down to 10 or something like that. So I don't think I paid full price for any of these records, yeah. which was great. You would do other? Sure. Um, stay on them. Well, I was gonna just stay, stay on topic. Stay on that last train of Clarksville, if you know what I mean. Um, this is one that's funny because Alex, um, you know, Alex and I, we obviously were friends off camera, you know, mm -hmm. little to what you might believe. Uh, and, uh, Alex is able to, I mean, he's got a lot more access to record stores, record shows where he's from. Um, this one's a, the one that we went to today was, is a quarterly thing that's around here. It's the same, it's the same 10 or 12 vendors that are here. Um, and, but Alex is always, you know, a good guy. I was like, Hey, what records are, are you looking for? And this is one of the records that I'm always looking for. This is called Monkey's Present or Present, which it goes both ways. This is the last album of the original, you know, quote, Monkey's. Um, Peter Tork had already already left. Um, and it, this, again, this is the last record of the, the, the trio. There was one more record for their um, stay on Cold Jim's Records, which was an affiliate of uh, CBS in Columbia. Um, Michael Nesmith was on here. He bought out his contract and left. One of my favorite songs on here, um, Listen to the Band, is a huge Michael Nesmith tune, and so is Good Clean Fun. I love both of those songs. Um, Pillow Time is kind of a, a neat little uh, Mickey Dolan's tune, but it's a really good album simply because um, it features a lot of Michael Nesmith, and I, I, I love that. Again, this is original um, on that Cold Gems label, which is really cool, and it's also, again, very clean. Because when Alex and I were looking at it, and the, we both looked at the vinyl at the same time, and Alex like, yeah, a lot of those Monkeys records are so beat up because they yeah. they were played by teenagers in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And we opened this one, and we're like, well, dang, that one looks really good. Uh, because, again, by this point, the show had been over for a year or so, and people just didn't care anymore, so they probably didn't buy it. But um, I'm really happy to have Monkeys present in my collection. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, this was one of the, I guess, excuse me, oh, beers. <laughs> banger, we'll call it a banger. Banger? Oh. Probably nowhere. There it is. Mm. Th this had been a record on my want list for a while just because it was never uh, it was never issued in the United States. So, you know, you don't have anything that you buy has to come, obviously, as an import or something like that. So um, this kind of, I guess, falls into proggy but more jazz fusion. But I've always wanted this because, to me, this was, like, just always a record. It features one of my favorite guitarists of all time. Uh, this is arguably some of his best work that he's ever done. Uh, we're going to 1976, 77 or so with uh, Gong's uh, Gazoos. So Gong went through so many different changes early on from being like weird, psychedelic, spacey stuff to more just general jazz fusion stuff. And then they broke off into different interpret like interpretations of the band. It was all over the place. Um, 
But during this era, they were firmly in their jazz fusion era. And again, Gazoos was never released in the United States, so I always sort of just had like the UK version of it. Um, wanted on my want list or whatever. Uh, but this um, was there. Good price on it. The guy cut me a really good deal. Uh, paired with some other records. And it's a German pressing. So it's kind of cool because it's on Virgin. And the Virgin labels are always super cool. But this is cool because it's the German, the German Virgin label. Sounds weird. Uh, but you got the twins uh, on there on the cool sort of green shade virgin uh, which is awesome but alan holdsworth for, for the for those who know you know just an absolute machine arguably technically the best most talented skilled guitarist uh we lost him just a few years ago but uh just one of the best to ever do it and i try to find any record that alan holdsworth plays on he's played on so many of those fusion records but uh gongs gazoos is amazing um just great stuff i couldn't be more happy to have this and uh was definitely my star pickup of the weekend that was an end of the day pickup like that was yeah. last the last guy that we talked to. Yep. Um, how many? How many more do you have? I got two. So, oh, two. but it's the same artist. So go ahead. You okay. Yeah. Um, also, I'll finish off this again. This is my find of the day for sure. Um, again, everybody that doesn't know, I'm a huge Bob Dylan fan. He's my he's my guy. He's number one. And um, again, Alex and I went to the store, to the record show for maybe not even a full hour because it was it was hot. It was <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. It was we were both in hoodies and you know we were just like no. uncomfortable. Yeah. It was bad. Um, so we left again. Got food. But I found this one before we left, and um, I'd never seen it. Um, I need to talk to some of my Dylan people to see if they've ever seen it. This is a um, th it's a 12-inch, um, three-song uh, EP, well, essentially a sampler of his album Saved, which was the second of his trio of uh, gospel, you know, Christian albums that came out in the late 70s and 1980 with um, uh, Shot of Love, which is my favorite of the three. But what's so cool, I mean, first of all, we know all about uh, white labels, you know, white label promo. So we got two songs that we have, uh, Are You Ready and What Can I Do For You? But then we have, and if you can see, look at that dead wax. Sorry about the fan. Um, it's hot in here too. Look at that one song on the back with all that dead wax for um, Solid Rock, which is a great tune. Um, again, 1980, it's in stereo. But you have that, again, really cool little sleeve here. Um, you know, three songs from Saved, the forthcoming album by Bob Dylan. You have a little bit of, you know, sticker damage down here. But then you have um, that cool little gold gold stamp up there. That, you know, it's proof proof is in the pudding there. So um, I'm re I'm really excited to have this, even if I never play it. I mean, I'm, I'll probably spin it once um, because I have saved. But um, it's just really cool to have as a Dylan Dylan guy. So that is like one of the like that's just a cool Dylan collectible and, thing there too. Yeah, and it was ten bucks again. I think I'm talking down to eight. Yeah. So. Um, Sam's always talking people down to things. You know, I do. He talks yeah. down to a lot of people. I do. Yeah, because I'm so tall. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, <laughs> to, to finish this out, you know, those know I'm down here visiting Sam in Virginia, but uh, I'm from Columbus. And so uh, not only am I always looking for uh, artists from Ohio, uh, but specifically if there's artists from Columbus or the greater Columbus area, I'm all in. Yeah. So this is a jazz artist I've talked about on my uh, channel a number of times before. And it's kind of just my goal to just find and get all of his stuff. And that's Ross Roll and Kirk. Uh, great, amazing multi-instrumentalist um, who blind uh, attended uh, the Ohio State School uh, for the Blind, uh, which was the actual first public school uh, for the blind in the entire country. Um, and his just his story is crazy. I mean, he would play multiple instruments at the same time. He would do all this crazy, wacky stuff. And so I was really uh, excited to find two of his records for a really, really great price. Because truthfully, you can find a lot of them in Columbus, but the record store owners know, like, the people in Columbus yeah. want his stuff. That local tax. <laughs> that local, that's a good point. Yeah, it's local tax. But down here, people are like, who's that guy? Um, so I found a couple of them. And this is Reeds and Deeds. This is from 1963 on the Mercury label. And that, listen, that kind of just, like, the covers cool it all. Cover. Like, that's not just for the cover. This is how he would play. Like, this is some out there crazy stuff. And he would have these, like, political and social comedic ramblings that he would do mid-show. I mean, the guy was a total character and just amazing in all the ways. So, um, yeah, this is when he was on Mercury uh, Reads and Deeds from 1963. And then this was the other one also picked up. Um, this is Rasan Rasan, 1970. This is a live album. So, um, similar, just cool cover. This is when he was on Atlantic. Um, yeah, just, uh, this stuff's out there. Like Sam, Sam would probably lose his giblets over this. This is not like your Bill Evans, like Sunday morning type stuff. This is some out there quirky stuff, but that's the kind of stuff I'm into. And he just has a wild story and, uh, you know, Columbus's own. So I think it was a pretty damn good day. I mean, it was. 
I think for all these records, I spent less than 50 bucks. You did? Yeah. And yeah. It, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm mean, shit. I didn't spend any, actually. He didn't spend any. Uh, there's a few 20s that came in on my wallet. <clears> well, you know, <laughs> someone's got to pay for my presents. Anyway, mm -hmm. any, any final words for the people? It was a good show. Again, the, um, we have a couple more later this year. I to tell Alex, I can't make the, there's a, there's one in June and then one, you know, probably back in the fall again. Um, so hopefully, you know, Alex will get back down here for another show mm -hmm. um, or just to come hang out. But um, it's always great to have Alex here. Um, it's, it's, Again, like when we hang out, it's like we've known each other for years. Um, we're just stupid, and it's a great time. So great time. Really, really enjoyed this record show. Actually, probably more than November for sure. Yeah, yeah I think I walked away with one record last time. You did. So, yep. yeah, awesome time. Oh, it's great visiting Sam, doing videos with Sam. Uh, his, you know, doing the whole thing. So, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Um, Sam, why don't you check us out? Uh, hope you all subscribe to Beer and Vinyl, and um, you know, as as the guy to my right says, cheers, y'all. Bye now. Bye.